Hi everybody, Darren from Design Solutions here. In this brief video, I want to discuss some of the options you have when you save out DXF and DWG files from SolidWorks when it comes to discrete layer mapping. Now these options aren't brand new to SolidWorks, though I'm showing this in SolidWorks 2011. Uh, these settings have been around for quite some time. So let's move over to SolidWorks and talk about this. When you're living on an island in SolidWorks, we really don't have a lot of use for layers, though they can be set up at this point. But if you do have some simple uh, layer mapping capabilities that you need, it can also be done right here at this point as well. If we right click anywhere on the toolbars and bring up our layer tool, you'll actually notice that this particular drawing does have a couple of different layers set up. Uh, currently we have dimensions on a red layer, and if I hide that you'll see that turn off. My notes are on a blue layer, lower right hand corner of the title block went blank, and then my title block itself is also on a separate layer. Now for simple things, different annotations and things like that, it's very obvious that we can do this in SolidWorks natively. If I want to add a new layer, what I can do is simply click New. We'll give this one a name, and I'm just going to call this for sake of argument Balloons. We'll change the color a little bit here just to show that differently. We'll grab that green. And then I can take the individual balloons that we have over here that are currently on my dimension layer shown in red, and we're just going to go ahead and control select each of those. Once I've got those, I can simply click Move, and because my balloons layer is active, you'll see that those balloons actually switch over now to the green layer and inherit the color directly from that. If I simply hit File Save and save as a DXF or DWG file, all the layers that we have currently set up will be maintained in the DWG or DXF file. The problem happens when we're trying to get more sophisticated and actually putting things on layers that SOLIDWORKS doesn't do natively, and that would be things like the spill materials shown, uh, hidden lines that we have down here in this drawing view, and actually the geometry lines themselves. None of those can be broken out or really need to be broken out directly inside of SOLIDWORKS itself. But as we save this file, I do have some options for creating those capabilities. So the first thing I want to do is actually delete all the layers that I have currently on this file. So let me just delete these so that you can see that this file is now completely clean and devoid of layers. You'll even notice that as I delete this last layer in red, all the entities that were currently on that layer will now default uh, to no layer style, which in this case is just the black line uh, color and font. So with no layers now in this file, what I want to do is show you how to actually save this out with much more sophisticated layer control. The way we do that is by simply taking the file and doing a file save as. Now when you're looking at regular file types like SOLIDWORKS drawings, you're not going to see very much inside the system except those typical uh, descriptions and references capabilities. But when I actually choose the file type of either DXF or DWG, you'll notice that an Options button appears. When we click that Options button, that's where we choose the version of AutoCAD that we want to send this out to. Because AutoCAD is very specific, a really good practice here is to overshoot it and go back to an earlier version of AutoCAD. That way, if you send it to somebody uh, that has any version within the last 10 years or so, they'll be able to open this file. But more importantly, we have an option here called Custom Map SolidWorks to DXF and DWG. With the option turned off, no prompting will take place upon a normal save. But with it turned on, I'm now going to be prompted to actually go ahead and create and or load an existing map file. So at this point, if I turn that on and simply save this DWG file out to my desktop, not only will I be prompted telling me that my scaling is differently from one sheet to another, and that has to do with the fact that I have a prompt popping up when it's not one-to-one -one scale, which is good if we're sending this to tooling or, or any other type of sheet metal manufacturing capabilities, but I also get prompted immediately for the use of a map file, which currently we have none. In the lower left-hand corner, I want to point out we have an option to load a map file if we have several that exist, and an option to save it once we create those here. And this is very important because I can create a file that's seen below with no layering, but when I send this out, I can actually choose different map files and I can send it to different companies based on their own layer mapping schemes. So in this case, I don't have to do the upfront work. I can have just simple map files saved based on what we're going to do here, and I can choose those depending on my uh, recipient. So to go ahead and create this, what I'm first going to do is define layers. We can do all the work over on the side here. I'm just going to simply define my first one as a BOM layer. In the middle, I can select a color. We'll just go ahead and call that blue. And then we can call a line type. I'm just going to grab visible edges. Second one we'll call dimension. And just to be consistent with what we saw before, I'm going to call that one red, and that will also be visible edges. Third one here is going to be geometry. That's going to be any of the actual part file information that we see with SOLIDWORKS. And I'm going to go ahead and leave those as dark as possible. In this case, I'm just going to choose black. 
and we'll also leave those as visible edges. And then the last one we'll call is going to be hidden. This one's very specific because, again, these types of edges aren't things that can be uh, pulled out separately inside of the SOLIDWORKS interface itself. Let's just go ahead and make that orange. For line style here, I'm going to go ahead and choose hidden edge line style. Now, to actually set up the map entities, we're going to go over to the right-hand side here. You can see from this pull-down list, it actually mimics exactly what we just set up for our defined layers on the left-hand side. If I had left those other four layers intact in the file, those would also be present in this list. So here what I'm going to do is just simply select one at a time and define these as well. I don't have to define the color and line style again because I can actually just use the layer settings that we either have here or that were set in the previous layer mapping button that you saw before. So we're just going to go ahead and say by layer. When it comes to the entities though, you'll see that when we select in this box, it's actually a pull down menu with a very sophisticated list of those entities that actually can't be broken out separately using just SOLIDWORKS layer settings itself. So for my build materials, what I'm going to do is just simply select from the list exactly what we're looking for here, which in this case is going to be the BOM. Next one we're going to do will be the dimension by layer, and then the entity type on this one. Again, we'll select from the list, and it's just going to be dimensions. Third, we'll go ahead and select geometry, choose by layer, which again is just going to take the settings that we have over on the left, and we'll select geometry. And then the last one here, we'll go ahead and select hidden. Again, by layer, and in this case, we're going to go ahead and scroll down until we see hidden lines. You'll see other things discrete, like blocks and center lines, sketch lines, cross-hatching, and so on. With that done, I'm going to simply go ahead and save this map file. And we'll just call this one Demo1. Okay, simple as that. Let's go ahead and say OK. And what it's now going to do is take this drawing and separate it out onto those individual unique layers. Okay, so let's go ahead and verify the results of the export by opening the DWG file up in an application that supports that file type. In this case, what we're going to use is a product called DraftSite. Now, DraftSite is developed by Dassault Systems, which is SolidWorks' parent company, and it's really built to support the year's worth of uh, DWG files that people have accumulated, and it works for DXF as well. But the real beauty of the tool is the fact that it's absolutely free. If you go to draftsite.com, that's D-R-A-F-T-S-I-G-H-T.com, you can download the application absolutely free. It'll support AutoCAD files for the last 15 years or so. So what we're going to do is use this to just simply show the layer scheming. Go ahead and open up that DWG file from the desktop. And there's our conveyor frame drawing. And what you'll see is quite different than it looked in SolidWorks. Here we actually have layers. So because of the map file settings, we've now got... Um, red, blue, black, and uh, orange layers. And if you go ahead and simply turn those on and off, we can see that these layers are now hidden or shown. Um, the dimensions will really show well. Now what really makes this powerful is the fact that uh, I can be very flexible in my export from SolidWorks. If I'm dealing with multiple clients, I would have to then take this drawing and set it up again manually so that each layer matches the different client. But because we're exporting using a map file, I can simply do another Save As. And if I have to deal with a different custom, customer standard, I simply save as a DWG. We'll change the name of this just so we can compare the two together in a second. Make that drawing two. And then when we go ahead and get prompted for our map file, I can simply load up a different version. Demo one's the one I created for you a moment ago. In this case, we'll go to an older existing version. And as I select that, you'll see that there's an obvious change to the color coding and actually the addition of another layer here for hatching in a salmon color. So with this, I can simply say OK. It'll do exactly the same export that we saw before. And then let's go back over to Draft Site, and we'll open up the new exported file. So in this case, we now have Drawing 2. So it should be quite obvious. We now have a green bill of materials, which stands out uh, pretty drastically. Over there, we have our yellow, which is our hidden geometry. And again, turning those on and off shows an obvious change to the screen. So it's extremely flexible. Let me just go ahead and show those windows side by side. And uh, you really should get the picture here. One originating file has now been exported uh, using two different map files with obvious results. So it's a very powerful tool um, and one that's been in SOLIDWORKS again for several years, um, as far as I can remember back. So if you have any questions on how to use this tool, you can contact us through our website. You can either go to www.decisolutions.com or, or you can contact us through our tech support line. That's tech support, all one word, at decisolutions.com.
Thank you very much for taking a moment to watch this video. I hope it helps you out. Thank you.